Now we'll copy that and paste it on the other ones. This is our power of tower. How about if I try that again? This is our tower of power. I don't have Lixdexia, you guys. I don't know why you would think that. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we got to fix a couple things here with our PowerPoint, and then uh, the plan is to, to finish out the build. <clears throat> but we got to have it running in tip top shape first before we worry about finishing out the build. So, um, I've had um, actually three issues since um, I left you in the last episode. The first issue has resolved itself, but for a while, these end refineries here were getting uh, plugged up on the polymer resin, just because it was kind of backed up on the belt. Um, that might have had something to do with, you know, when I first started the factory and, and hadn't had the plastic machines up above powered up yet, I don't know. but. After running it for about 30 minutes or so, it cleared itself up and it has not been a problem ever since. So that problem kind of resolved itself. I have another, not really, uh, I have a weird situation that's not causing any apparent problems, but if we look at this pump, you'll notice that it says that it's exceeding the recommended level of head lift. I don't understand that because that pump there is positioned in the exact position that the game just told me to, you know, with the little marker that it has. Um, but it still says it's it's lifting at five meters higher than it's supposed to. So yeah, I don't understand that at all. I suppose we might be able to, you know, move this pump up a little bit. But it, the thing is, is it's not causing any noticeable issues. So un, until and unless it does cause any issues, I think I'm just going to leave it alone and let it do its thing. Um, these refineries here would be the first to be affected if there wasn't enough water. And as you can see, they're completely full. So we're not going to worry about that. I just wanted to point it out because I thought it was a little bit odd. We do have a real problem, though, that we need to deal with. So, basically, um, these end refineries are not getting an adequate amount of oil consistently. Uh, both of you know, both of the ones on the end, not so much these guys. Yeah, these guys are fine, um, but the ones on the end, both down below and on the second floor, have a similar problem. And I was a little confused about why that was, so I did a little bit of research. And the long and short of it is that, you know, pipes in Satisfactory uh, are a two-way flow. They don't just flow in one direction. Um, and so because they can also flow backwards, you can have problems with a backflow or sloshing. Um, I don't know if those two things are exactly the same thing, but I heard it called sloshing and I heard it called backflow. So the way that I understand it is that you know, this pipe fills up with oil, right? But as it gets further and further down, there's less and less oil because the oil's being consumed by these earlier machines. And what I, what I think happens is that when these machines suck in more oil, what it does is it starts to pull some of the flow back this direction uh, because there's, you know, there's a lot more pull going that way than there is going this way. And you can kind of see that happen. So if, if we watch the rate of this oil come in here, you'll notice that it slows down. See how it's slowed down? And then it'll speed up. And then it'll see now it's starting to slow way down again. And it's bad enough to where these two machines can't stay operating 100% of the time. See, it's going really fast and now it's going really slow. And I think here again, it's because the oil is backflowing or being drawn back this way by these other machines. 
So there's the the solution that I saw in multiple places. I watched a couple videos. I read some Reddit articles and some articles on Steam and so forth. Uh, well, not articles, but you know, posts from people. Is that you want to run the pipe in from both ends, A, and B, if you put a valve right before the first machine that's ingesting, so right here, that will prevent backflow uh, from the other other side of that valve, which will also improve the situation. So we're going to do both of those things. Let's start first with the valve and let's just see what it does, uh, if even just that alone will improve the situation. Uh, keep in mind, too, that this is as far as I've ever been in this game, so this is all new to me and I'm learning. So this is, you know, I'm definitely a rookie, but, you know, you got to start somewhere, right? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this valve and we're going to connect it right here. And what this valve will do is, well, it does a couple things. It, it will allow me to um, reduce the flow in the pipe if I needed to for some reason. But for our purposes, uh, what it's actually going to do is it's going to prevent any backflow from coming back this way. Now, I also learned that if you connect fluid buffers in line with one another, like we have done here, um, the game will try and evenly distribute the liquid across both of them, which means that if this one's lower than this one, it'll actually suck the fluid back this way and, and create a backflow. And so the uh, the fix for that is to not make these in line, but have this this one. So basically what we would do is we would move this. We'd have to move all of that. We'd move this one over here and then run a, a, a branch off to that one and keep the main line, the main line, and then run a, a branch off, you know, a separate segment off to that one. That's something that I may do later and will definitely keep in mind for the future. I kind of wanted to redo this stuff over here, but I, I think the, the more immediate fix is to use these valves and also change it so that we have fluid coming in from both ends of the manifold. All right, so let's, uh, let's also color this valve here. Now let's just see if even putting this valve on alone made any difference at all. It may not, but we'll see. Yeah, see, it, it still, still hasn't really done much because most of the backflow is happening on in the manifold itself from these machines, I believe. And again, I'm, I'm completely a rookie to this. Uh, that's just my guess and trying to logic this all out in my brain as to, you know, why things work the way they do in the game. All right, so what that means then is we need to we need to also come in uh, and, you know, split the line and come in from this side as well. So how to do that neatly is the next question. And what we could do is, let's see, we're running off of this lower pipe here. So we could put a junction here and then, or it would actually maybe be neater if we put the junction inside of here and then run it over the top of this pipe. I kind of don't want to run it out here because this is, you know, technically the edge of the building, right? And then we could, when we get to this point, we could branch it down and go this way. I think that's what we'll do. I think that's what we'll do. Okay, so. Let's go ahead then and um, we're going to grab a stackable pipeline and I'm going to put that in front of this guy and maybe even all the way up against it. Let's make sure that our pipes are uh, set to the oil pipes. Okay, um, let's temporarily remove this, and we want to grab a junction and put it right there. Okay. And we'll color that yellow, and we also need to color that yellow. Okay, so then what we'll do is we'll run this straight out 
to say here. And then we want to go to horizontal to vertical. Yeah, I want to I kind of wanted to get that up higher. So I think what we need to do is move this back a couple of notches. And we're probably going to have to at least temporarily put this here. It's probably going to be too tight. Actually, you know what? Let's see what it does without the collar. Yeah, see, it clips into the pipe. So, okay, so that means we really kind of have two options here. We either move this out more, and then there's less room to maneuver through here. Or we run this up higher so that it comes through this hole. And I th think I'm favoring maybe that option. Let's see if the pipe will actually do that for us. Yes, it will. I mean, it's clipping a little bit there, but I think we can live with that. Very good. Okay, so I think we're just going to do that. We're going to run it up a little higher. Let's put that in place just so that it's... Uh... Uh, you know, uh, has actual support. Um, we'll do the same thing here. We'll put another one of those, but then we'll switch this over to a normal conveyor pole. Okay, good. Now, um, let's take... That is correct. Okay. Let's take this down to here, and we're going to probably want it... Right. Yeah, let's do it on this seam and see if that does the trick for us. If it doesn't, we'll adjust it later. Okay, we'll run that into here. And that one down into there. Now let's come over to here, and we want this to be another junction. We're going to have to disconnect that, and let's disconnect that too, and we'll put this here. Okay, now let's run this pipe. To there, I guess. Wait, what? This pipe has an invalid shape. Let's do a... Auto? Okay. So, I'm guessing we're probably going to want this to come to... Let's just take it right to the seam there and see what it does. So that really means, I think, that this needs to... I'm going to set this back to horizontal to vertical. Yeah, we're going to have to move this over probably to here. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. That looks good. And I actually like it too because it gives us a little bit of room to scooch through here if we need to. Okay, so. Now, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to put another valve on this end. This is what the recommendation was from what I read. Make sure the flow is going that way, of course. 
to prevent any backflow from coming back along here as well. <laughs> Now, the question here is why do we not have any oil coming into this pipe? Okay, that pipe's full. There's hardly anything going into there. It's supposed to, from my understanding, it's supposed to evenly split the oil, but it isn't doing that, so... Hmm. I don't think the lift has... It's not enough head lift there to worry about anything, but we are obviously not getting any oil in here at all. And this pipe's completely full. Okay. You know, theoretically, I guess, shouldn't we be able to put a valve here? Well, except for the fact that it's not going to fit. Oh, it will just barely fit. And prevent this from backflowing that guy. And, I mean, I might be... This might be a little excessive on the valves, but I'm just trying to come up with a an appropriate fix here. So we we're not getting any oil in here. Um, is is this bugged? Let's just reset this. Maybe that's what it is. Hmm. All right, let's redo. Oh. Oh, well, I, I don't know. That was weird. I don't know if it, that junction was actually working or not. Now that I do that. Okay, now is there oil? Oh, no, we got to reset. Oh, shit. That isn't going to work either. <laughs> I was assuming that that was correct, but obviously it wasn't. Okay, what about now? Okay, let's reset this pipe first before we connect the other one. And obviously we got to... Come into here. And now do we have oil? Okay, now we have oil flowing. I mean, that makes sense. I just wanted to make sure that we could see oil actually moving through this pipe. Beautiful. Okay. Now, theoretically, once we connect this one, it should evenly distribute the flow across these two sections. Okay, well, it's flowing now. So my guess is that maybe just that junction that I had put down originally wasn't actually connected properly. All right, let's go back over here now and see what's going on. All right, that's the most oil I've seen in this thing uh, since we first fired it up. Let's see. Let's see if it's gradually over time increasing. It's still idled out. What the fuck? Yeah, we've we haven't completely lost our flow, but it's it's definitely been curtailed. Does it actually have something to do with it being raised up a little bit? 
I wouldn't think so, because, I mean, that's only, what, about five, six meters? The way headroom works, too, this is another thing I learned. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the way headroom works on buffers is that if a, if a large buffer is completely full, I think it has a headroom of 12 meters, and if it's, like, half full, then it cuts it in half to 6 meters. But, you know, these guys are almost full, so, th so that means they should be able to support at least 12 meters of head lift, uh, which we're nowhere even close to. So ultimately, this doesn't really fix the issue. I mean, for a while there, there was a decent amount of oil in there, but we could try an experiment. And just keep the pipe Well, there's actually two things that come to mind. Does it matter? It shouldn't make any difference, but does it matter that this is coming out the front instead of out the side? I wouldn't think that would make a damn bit of difference. Let's just try that and see if it does anything at all. Yeah, it's still not uh, not really doing much, is it? Okay. I would not have bet money on that to, to work, but right now we're just kind of trying to science this out a bit. Would it... Uh, hmm. Okay. Let's try this. Let's remove this pipe. And temporarily remove this pipe. And I'm just going to spaghetti this for a minute. So now it's on the same level as the other guy. Definitely seen more oil now than we did before. But let's see if it stays that way. Okay, it's staying fairly consistent. Ah, look at that! Okay. All right, well this one's this one's completely full now. This one's has improved. So I think the moral to this story um, from what I'm seeing is that when you do that split uh, or you know when you have a loop like this it all has to be on the same level. That would seem to be the situation. Yeah, see, that's got a way more oil in it for a much longer period of time than it did with the first setup. All right, so that means then... Yep, see, that one's completely full now. What about these? That one seems to have gone down a bit, actually, but not enough to be concerned about. That one's gone down... Ooh. That one's gone down a lot. What about you? You've gone down some. You've gone down some. You have not. Uh, not significantly. Okay, so now it's the two dudes in the middle that seem to have a bit of shortage here. But the question is, can they keep up enough to where it's not significant? I don't know the answer to that. 
The other thing, you know, that's always a possibility is I couldn't really find anything current on, you know, pipe mechanics. You know, the videos and stuff that are, and articles or uh, posts that I was looking at were at least a year old and some of them older. So it's possible that things have changed with the mechanics. But we saw a definite improvement when we created a loop and kept that loop on the same level. There was absolutely no doubt that that improved the situation, um, except for the fact that it made these better and these worse. But is it is it still going to be enough to keep them going 100% all of the time? That's the question. It, this one appears to be doing okay. That one's not bad. That one's okay. Yeah, maybe it's just a... See, that one's pretty close there. That one's good. This is just really bizarre how all this shit works. <laughs> See, that one just barely made the cycle. But now it's going faster, and then it's slowing down, and going faster, and slowing down. Well, I think it's safe to say that we improved the situation, <clears throat> but I'm not confident that we've completely resolved it. Alright, let's try something else. If we disconnect this right in the center, now we've broken the loop, and nothing from there can backflow from this side and vice versa. Does that make any difference at all? Let's take a look. All right, so. The verdict is I have definitely noticed an improvement by cutting this off here. So this guy is now in the 30s and has even gotten up into the 40s. Um, this guy is high enough to where it's not starving. It's able to keep up with the cycles, uh, though it's not filling as fast as the other ones. Um, and that's on the end of this side, and then this one is the same situation. It's not completely full, but it's definitely able to keep up now uh, in the last five minutes or so of me monitoring this. So here again, is it perfect? I don't know. You know, because I don't fully understand the pipe mechanics, but it's it definitely improved. I mean, at the end of the day, we just want these machines to run at 100%. You know, that's, that's really what it boils down to. So whether or not it completely fills up or not is irrelevant as long as it just keeps running. So I think then, at least for my build, the way that I have done it, those are our solutions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the camera. I'm going to I'm going to redo this so it looks nice and works properly. So let me get all that stuff done and when I'm finished and have tested it and have shown that it is running more consistently I mean we do we do see less fluctuation than we saw earlier. But I also think we may have similar related issues on our fuel lines too. Like, see, there's a red light over there. And we might be able to improve that situation with some, some valves as well. But we're getting close. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're getting close. Okay, so yeah, I'll bring you guys back here in a little bit. And we'll go from there. All right, guys, we are back, and uh, I've got a pretty damn nice functioning fuel power plant here. Uh, if you look up Power Grid B here, that is our fuel plant, and we have nice straight lines. Uh, so we're producing 10,000 megawatts, and everything's looking really good on this 
uh, with this power plant. Um, I mean, perfect, but that doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. I have, you know, I have had some dips. Um, and what will happen is sometimes these very end generators will run out of fuel. But it looks like, you know, now that I'm looking at them, looks like they're finally kicking in here. Um, so each one of these, see, this one's a little bit lower. Each one of these generators requires one fuel per cycle. And um, so, yeah, these end ones were, you know, were running out. But it's been running pretty stable uh, for for a little while now. Um, I have another weird thing that I have not been able to figure it out, too. And it doesn't make any sense. Occasionally, the consumption will bump just a Nat's eyebrow above the maximum consumption, which doesn't even make sense. I don't, I don't understand that, and I haven't really figured out what it is that's causing that. It's like something's drawing power, you know, from the from the grid, but that is not on the grid, which it, I, I just, yeah, I, I'm baffled <laughs> as to what that might be. But, I mean, overall, it's... um. It's running way, way better. And I think that we can go ahead and proceed now with the finishing the build um, after we, you know, after I've done everything I've done. So let's take a look over here and see what's going on. I did, I tried a couple of different things. So basically what I did here, as you can see, well, actually, let's start over here. So I put the buffers in parallel instead of in serial. Um, in other words, I moved them off of the main line because, uh, you know, with some research and stuff that I did, watched a couple videos, and I even found a, a, a pretty nice guide on how pipes work in this game and so forth based upon one of the videos that I watched. Um, it was saying it's better to put these in parallel rather than in, in end line or in serial because when you put them in serial, then they cause a lot of sloshing or backflow. So I did that. Um, but I also took this a step further, and what I did was I put some valves here, and I and I essentially closed the valves all the way down, uh, so the buffers are not even part of the equation at the moment. But as you can see, they're all completely full of oil, so if you know we ever needed to, you know, shut down those pumps for any reason whatsoever, we could just open these valves and use the the oil um, in the tanks temporarily. Uh, so, and, and, you know, the advantage of removing these from, from the equation is that the system's not now taking these into account and trying to keep them full and keep them, you know, load balanced and whatever. Um, and so we just simply have 600 oil per minute pumping into 10 refineries that, re that take 600 oil per minute. Now, um, I have I have some room on that oil pump way out that way. Now we're gonna lose power here. Um, it's only it, it's actually underclocked. So what I did was I overclocked it, and I set up a valve over here, and I ran just temporarily ran some pipes down to to just top off those tanks. So I also have valves on the back end here too, as you can see. Um, you know, just to fill them up rather than pulling them from here because basically you know this line is completely maxed out based upon how we have it set up i also you know heard in some of the uh, information that i looked at um that when you do run a 600 per minute uh pipe system at and you max it out it has issues but the thing is is the information, and I mentioned this earlier, the information that I've read is, it's kind of old. So I don't know if that still applies, you know, to update eight and, you know, any patches that they've added since then. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's what we did with the buffers. Uh, so we put them in parallel rather than in, in serial. Um, I also redid the pipes, um, and raised them up just a little bit. Uh, basically one pipe riser. 
Uh, so I did that too, just to, uh, you know, get them up a little bit higher, I guess. More, well, actually, more specifically, I did it that way because I wanted everything to be absolutely on the same level or lower as it flows to the machines. And because one of the things that I learned is that um, if you raise if you raise the pipe up and then back down to the machines, you have problems. And we actually saw that earlier when I was trying to do that from over here, if you guys remember. Uh, it's been actually several hours since I recorded that footage because I've been working on this for a long time. Um, all right. So anyway, what I did then is I brought one pipeline in and then I split those off to each side, as you can see here. And I also have the pipeline a little bit higher than the machines um, just you know just so gravity can help us too because gravity does affect you know um, uh, flow in the pipes right so I figured well if they're a little bit higher that's gonna be better than uh, definitely better than lower and maybe better than level probably doesn't make much difference but that's the way I did it so as we can see uh, this pipe is completely full a uh, 600 uh, meters per minute maximum flow rate and then when it splits off here it's basically 300 on this side and 300 on this side so it does you know uh, the junction split it evenly uh, by the way the junctions don't have any flow rate they're kind of like um, you know like a splitter or a merger where you know it doesn't you know speed doesn't matter it's just it's infinite speed if you will okay so it splits those off and then starts to feed each one of the refineries now I decided not to make this a loop because I tried it both ways um, and instead I just ended it at you know the end refinery here and it's interesting you know how how this the sciencing of this worked because for some strange reason and I'm not exactly sure why these machines these end machines which are the ones that you know have the most potential to uh, to not get enough resources the ones down here um are are holding pretty steady at you know uh, up into the 20s as you can see before it cycles right uh that one does this one also gets into the 20s that one's into the 30s and this one is high 20s as well um but up here these guys are a little lower i mean they're still okay they still uh you know from all of my monitoring um you know they still are getting enough oil to can you know stay work at 100 percent as you can see here uh but not quite as much as the ones down below and the only difference between down below and up here of course is that we we're pumping the oil up here but i mean this pipe is still completely saturated i mean 100 percent full so I, I don't know. I just don't understand what the difference is. I mean, we have the same scenario, right? We've got 600 in there. We got 300 in here, 300 in there. And um, yeah, so I don't know. It's just a little odd. But the important thing is everything is running now at 100%. Okay, so you can see that uh, as 100%. That's 100%. And um, if we look at uh, one of our generators here. Uh, you see there was a, just a little bit of a dip there, but that dip is not, I don't think that's from the oil. I think that's from the, the fuel. Every once in a while, you know, the generators all the way on the end, you know, get a little bit starved. Uh, but then, you know, then it kicks back in and then it's fine again. So, I mean, I, uh, under the circumstances, I, that's acceptable. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. The only thing I was thinking I could maybe do is uh you know add a second line oh by the way i did put valves here too so to prevent any backflow into these lines um and that seemed uh, seemed to help but I, I couldn't say definitively if it if it's helped but it seems to have or maybe i just it, it's just wishful thinking on my part i don't know but i have a valve here and then the one over there so that there's no backflow at all going back into you know the the feed lines if you will so you know but for the most part i mean this is running pretty damn steady i mean 
<laughs> it's uh, it looks pretty good, and I'm I'm you know reasonably impressed with it. But uh, yeah, this has definitely been a learning experience, man. Working with these pipes and learning more about how the flow works and all of that—it's just—it's pretty nuts. Okay, so anyway, I think we are good to proceed with finishing out this build. Um, I I don't know if I told you this or not, but the other thing I tried is I actually tried a loop. So I I, I did loop this around. Um and you know, monitored it for about an hour or so. And it certainly wasn't any better than just, you know, ending it at the last machine. And it kind of seemed to me like it was maybe not as good. But I couldn't say that again definitively. What I could say, though, is that doing it this way seems to, to work pretty damn good. In this way, meaning we don't loop it, we just end it at each machine on each little branch coming off of here. Okay, so let's uh, let's get this project done because, frankly, I'm kind of tired of working on it, even though it has been kind of fun. Um, I want to move on to other things. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm not planning on doing a lot of real fancy schmancy stuff with this particular building. Um, it's going to stay more industrial feeling because that's kind of what it is. Uh, but we're going to do a few things to kind of spiff it up. And we also, um, I'm also planning on adding a bunch of capacitors too. Let's go ahead and go into our blueprints. And uh, hopefully I've got enough. Yeah, I've got a fairly decent amount of steel beams here. So we're going to go to blueprints and we're going to go to oil products. And at, first of all, though, this is, what is this? This is a southeast corner. Okay. So as you can see, I have five girder blocks at least that's what I like to call them um, on each floor here right but it's actually 10 so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the blueprints and we're gonna grab the southeast girders and it's actually easier for me to attach these to the to the ceiling and as opposed to underneath and boom there we go okay Cool. Uh, so that kind of gives it, you know, like little angular supports here. Adds a little more pizzazz to things. And I'm honestly just not worried about any clipping that may be taking place here because the reality of this is, in you know, if this was an actual building, you would run your wires and whatnot in such a way that there would be conduits or, you know, you would wrap it around, right? We've already had that conversation. We don't need to have it again. <laughs> it's just the way it goes. Okay, so... Let's uh, also do the southeast corner here. Uh, so we'll go to blueprints and southeast girders. And if I if I put that in blueprint mode, I don't know if that's going to really do much to help in this scenario. We just got to line it up manually. Oh. Okay, cool. Now we want to do the northeast corner next. So let's get uh, let's get down just a little bit, and we'll go northeast girders, and we'll line that up like so. Beautiful. Okay. Now let's grab um, uh, this, and we want to set this to zoop, and we'll just run those across like so. And again, in a real-world situation, you know, this would be man, shit. That is kind of clipping like a motherfucker, isn't it? <laughs> Ah, Jesus. Okay. Maybe we don't need these middle ones. The whole idea, though, was that it was, you know, just bracing all the way across. Hmm. All right, if we're going to do that, maybe what we should do then instead is take these off and just do this. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, uh. Man, that's finicky. 
I want you right here. Okay, and then you right here. Maybe we do that instead. I think I can live with that. Okay, we're going to want to do the same thing up here too then. And yeah, I guess we'll just follow that MO for the uh, for the entire build here. Up here, you know, we could do that, but I think just to keep things symmetrical. Um, whoops. We'll just use these um, angle pieces here. Okay, so you get the basic idea. So what I'm going to do is uh, go around and finish uh, putting all these girders in place. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start working on the next floor where we're going to put a whole bunch of capacitors in. All right, so I'll bring you back when we're ready to do that. All right, guys, we are back here, and um, I'm at the substation for the power here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add our new 10,000 megawatt power grid to the original grid. Let's do it. Boom. All right, so that brings us up to 13,840 megawatts of power that we are producing. Um, and so that means we need 138 batteries if we want to be able to sustain that in the case of a total power shutdown for one hour. We want to subtract 18 from that figure because we already have nine uh, batteries over at the end of the coal and nine batteries over at the rocky desert. Uh, so basically that means we need 120. Yeah, we need about 120 capacitors or batteries in total. So we are going to put those at the top of our, our factory here. I don't have enough material. I, have a, I don't have enough room for enough material to make all of those in one fell swoop. Got all the stators and cables that I need, but uh, only about half of the wire and modular frames. And actually, even that's not enough, come to think of it, because I just built that based upon 16, um, 16 of my blueprints of batteries. So let's go ahead and put those in place first, and then we'll we'll see where we are. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually build... Uh, where are we at? Yep. We're going to build... Let's make that vertical. Wait. What did I do? I switched the to the wrong thing there. Vertical. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Um, let's do that on all corners, and we'll bring the the power up so we have some hoverability. These floors, however, three, four, five, I think are only going to be five uh, or twenty meters high, uh, which is what that is. That's twenty meters right there, because these are four meter foundations. Um, all right, so let's go down here. And we want to grab this power connector. And bring that up. To here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other four corners. So that way we have power for hovering. Let's get into our blueprints. And this is going to be pretty easy easy to do. Uh, so we have 16 in total uh, for, uh, for the blueprint here. And let's see, we want the... Yeah, we want the main connection to be out there. And then each one of these batteries fits right in the center of these foundations so it's quite quite easy to put into place 
right, let's grab the next one here. Uh, oh, wait a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, okay. I see what I did wrong. I was going to say, why isn't that fitting? That should fit. <laughs> Try it again. That's where we want to go. That is a lot of batteries, man. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to connect... the power to those and let's see this ends right here so now what we want to do is just bring that connection to there um, that connection can go there this one can go oh wait a second actually we can just no, I can't do that. I need to turn... I guess I need to turn this one and this one the other direction. Okay, so let's redo these. So that way we can connect them to the corners here. Okay, so that gives us 64 so far. Um, all right, now, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll grab a concrete one meter and we'll, uh, let's see, we gotta put that on super dupe. And we'll just make another half. Oh, did I, do I have six of these here? One, two, yeah, I do, okay. Half floor, uh, meaning in terms of height. So instead of being a, uh, a 40 meter floor, this will be a 20 meter high floor. The nice thing about having all these capacitors here is that now I've got plenty of contact points to continue hovering. Oh, uh, wait, what are we out of? Oh, we're out of beams. Okay. All right, so let me go get some more uh, resources, and uh, then we'll build the second floor here. All right, guys, we're back. Let's go ahead and set the next section of these guys down. Uh, we want it to be there and right there. If we go into blueprint mode, well, I guess we already are in blueprint mode. Yeah, it doesn't really help for this particular. Oh, my God. How did I miscalculate the wiring on that? I guess I did. Well, let's get that one in place. And I need enough materials for th three more of these because, let's see. Okay, so 16, let's do the math here. 16 times um, eight is 128. And I said we needed about 120. 
So having a couple extra is not going to hurt anything at all. Right, okay. So I just need enough for three more sets of these blueprints. So one, two, three. Okay, yep. All right, let me go back and grab that stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and grab these. And we want to put, want to make sure that the inputs on that side there put this one to there I think that's right and this one to here we'll connect the power in here and over here okay so that gives us a hundred and twenty eight in total um, so 128 times 100 is 12,800 megawatts. Yeah, we, well, okay, but remember, we already have 18 in place. <laughs> so that's 1,800. So 13,840 minus 1,800 is 12,040. We have 12,800. So we, we have a little bit more than we actually need, which is perfect. And then uh, the plan, or the intention here is that in the future, if we expand the power even more, which we probably will, we'll probably have to get into nuclear power when we get way into the end game then we add we just keep adding to this tower you know more capacitors and this will be basically the tower of power that's exactly what it'll be all right so let's get the roof on this place but we have enough now to keep our entire power grid across the entire planet up and running for uh, an hour in case something happened in all of the power, we lost power across the whole entire planet. We're just going to, it's better to be prepared and not need to do it than the other way around, right? Okay, so for these floors here, um, let's see, I don't want to get too far out. I'm going to fall. Why don't we do one... of you and then we'll do a an angled piece um so honestly I think the only other two things I'm gonna do for this tower We could, uh, well, we need to put rails on, and we need to put, uh, I want to put lights on it, uh, or in it. So as far as the lights go, um, we're basically just going to use the normal ceiling lights, and for these floors, it should be pretty straightforward. Where's the center? Okay, so let's put this here, and then we can have the... Power connectors can um, face to the south because it kind of really just doesn't matter. And we'll put the lights in with this spacing. And then we'll connect this into here and bring this. That's right in this center of that. Okay, yeah, bring that to there. And then just and I'll probably do another set of lights on this side and another set of lights on this side. 
and we'll do that for every every floor. Uh, when we get down back down to these other floors, not this one, but these floors, because we've got these ceiling pieces, we're going to have to do it a little bit differently because obviously we've got all of this logistic stuff in the way. So probably what we'll do here is we'll do a, a row, a two rows on each side. So a row here, a row here, a row there, and a row there. Uh, so we'll get all that lighting in. I'm going to, you know, put rails along here. We've used the industrial uh, railing down there. So I think maybe we'll just kind of stick with with that for here. And yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and put railing because I'm not planning on putting any walls or anything. And this, I'm just going to leave it open. It's going to be just kind of an open-air, industrial-looking facility. And that'll look nice. So we'll have the lights. We'll do these. And then I might do something fairly simplistic and easy to move uh, for the top of the tower, just so we have something kind of cool to look at. I've got an idea in mind for that, but I need to kind of test it out a little bit so I'm not going to tell you right now what that is I'll probably just do it and then show you uh, what the end result is so I'm gonna cut the camera here I'm gonna get all the lighting in I'm gonna get all the rails in as far as transportation I mean getting up to each floor I mean we probably should have a hyper tube system at least we have our hover pack but you know, it's always a good idea to have more than one way to to get up to these places. Uh, so it's really just kind of a question of where that would go. Um, and I'll I have to I'll have to think think about that too. But probably whatever we do for hypertubes, it'll go up. You know, one of the girders, the one that has the least amount of shit in it. I'm guessing. So I'll have to figure that out too. As you can see, this. This uh, network is running very smooth. Um, again, minimal, if any, dips at all. Uh, so, yeah, just wanted to show you that. All right, let's go ahead and add it back to the main grid now. And uh, what we're going to do is <coughs> get uh, finish up our tower here with uh, cosmetics and also getting a, a hypertube set up going. And we're going to do some kind of cool stuff with the lights, too. Okay, so let's start with the hypertubes first. Um, and this northwest section here of girders going all the way up are the least obstructed out of everything else. Um, so this is where we're going to build this. And um, I'm just going to show you the first part, and then I'll just build the rest really quickly off camera because it's going to be wash, rinse, and repeat. But what we're going to do is we're going to temporarily remove this foundation here. And I want to, let me get my piping hot bar up here. We're going to put a floor hole, a hypertube floor hole right there. Because it's easier to start from the floor hole and work down than the other way around. And um, then what we're going to do is we're going to grab a hypertube. And we're going to connect that in there. If I can, there we go. I uh, also want this to be horizontal to vertical. And we're going to bring this all the way down and set it right there. So we have a nice straight vertical pipe there. Okay, now let's get uh, the entrance and set that in place. And we'll hook that up to some power here. Let me see, that's... If we just go straight there... Yeah, that works. There's no clipping, okay. That does the trick. Alright, now, if you guys didn't know this, don't ever set up a hypertube into a floor hole and then connect the power and travel through it before you have the other end in place. Because if you do that, you'll get stuck in that floor. And the only way to get unstuck that I know of 
is then you have to actually disassemble the foundation in the hole to get out. Okay, so take my word for it. You want to make sure that you have this set up as well before you travel through it. Uh, okay, so now what we're going to have to do with this one is we have to set it to noodle mode. And we'll bring it out to... I think that's the same... Yeah, same position as the other one. All right, we'll put an entrance here. Okay, once you have both entrances in place, then you can safely travel through the tube and you won't get stuck. It's a beautiful thing. All right, now, what we're basically going to do um, is we're going to just alternate sides for each floor. So now, going up to this next floor, uh, we're going to do essentially the same thing on this side. Um, you know what, too? We might be able to just put the hole in. Let's see, that's uh, the zero key right there. And then we want number six to bring the hypertube down. We want to go back to horizontal to vertical here. And we're going to set this one right here. Let me lock that and make sure it's straight with it. Auto save. Yep, that looks good. And we will grab the entrance here. Mark it up. Okay, then we will go up to the next floor and again make sure we have an entrance set in place here before we try and travel. I, I think the game actually shouldn't let you travel through it until you have an entrance, but there's, there's probably more to it than just that. Okay, let's set this to noodle and double check it. Yep, that looks good. Put an entrance there. Why don't we run the cable over here and then down? It'll be a little neater. Okay, so then when we go down, we just do this, run around the corner, and so forth. And then, likewise, going up, run around the corner, and so forth. We have to do the run around the corner because we need a way to, you know, obviously get off on both, uh, on all floors. So it can't be just one continuous line, unless I wanted to make a separate one going all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom, but I don't think that's necessary. All right, guys, so you get the basic idea. Um, we're going to just move back to this side now and do the same exact thing, and it'll be wash, rinse, and repeat until we get all the way to the top of the tower. So I will see you guys there. This needs to be horizontal to vertical uh, when we're finished. All right, guys, we're back, and uh, we got the Hyperdo tubes set up uh, to get us all the way to the top. And I also added a couple more Hypertube setups to get us here to the... Uh, whoops, went back to the wrong one. Uh, out to this building. It takes a decent amount of time, you know, for me to... To walk out here or even hover out here and so what I did was I set a hyper tube line right down there uh, that wraps around um, and starts right at the uh, what is that yeah the west side of the storage building and then I did a second hyper tube connection from the main line uh, right down there uh, going down uh, into this side of the building. Uh, so that way, if I happen to be more o over on that end of things and I need to get over here, I can just come through the, you know, the main loop and then hop off to get over here. But if I'm more on this side, like over by the storage, then I come down this way. And I timed it, and the, the hypertubes are just slightly faster than, you know, doing the little run, jump, and hot skip thingamadoodle. Uh, and definitely faster than hovering, because hovering, you know, this is the fastest speed I can hover at. So that seemed to work pretty good. Um, it wasn't too complicated setting things up. I just had to kind of manipulate 
the spacing and use combinations of horizontal to vertical and noodle, you know, to get it to do it neatly without clipping, you know, through these girders here. And um, I also had to do a little bit of fancy schmancy configuration on the other end to get it again to go through those girders over there over on the west side of the building you know without causing any trouble um, I'll just sh I'll show you what I did just so you know for anybody that may be curious but essentially what I had to do is I had to build a wall up to here and then I um, I had to put down a a temporary platform uh, that I actually ran all the way through to the other side over here too because I had to do the same thing over here but then what what I had to do is I had to put the uh, the support down like this but then I pressed H and hold held down control and nudged it a half a nudge to the left to get it to properly fit because if it if, if it just sits where it wants to go uh, then it was clipping right into the edge of the girder here and likewise if I did a full nudge to the left then it was clipping through this girder and this little support thing is clipping through the girder but the tube itself is not and that's the important thing yeah it, it's it's not actually clipping through there it just that little section there is actually part of the iris you know valve thingy on the hyper tube okay so yeah we got that done and we are ready to move on now to the next part of our finishing our build out here. On the ground floor, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to put these metal walls in and we're going to run those um, let's run those to there and actually I got to remove this stuff now and we'll put one there too what we're gonna place here is a conveyor hole and then we'll just give it the steel texture for that pipe and over here we will do a door so we, we should be able to just come in here, grab the door, press and hold control and replace it. But it doesn't also replace the texture. So we still have to repaint that with a texture. Actually, you know what, now that I think about it, I think instead of doing that, let's do a gate here. Yeah, I think I'd prefer the gate. And it might also... be useful to put a gate here I guess just so we don't have to run over to that side to get into the building yeah so maybe we'll do that after that what we're going to do now is we're going to grab uh, the industrial rails and I want to run Two, a double stack of these down like so and the idea here is that it's kind of like um, you know a, a little bit of a chain link thingy or even almost like a, I know it has nothing it doesn't look at all like razor wire but the point being is you know how you have walls and you have like barriers on top of the wall so people can't just climb over them that's the idea here Okay, let's go to here and let's grab this black color and put a filter on so we're just coloring those and then we'll... I just want the rails to all be black here too. Good. Okay, I think that looks pretty cool. So if we're walking down here and we need to get inside, we just go right through the door. Now we do have this big ass pipe in the way, but I mean, not much we can do about it really. I, 
I don't have enough room to put like a catwalk stairs over it. So anybody, you know, coming in the factory is just going to have to scooch underneath it. Or, in my case, use, use the hover. Okay, so yeah, that's basically what we're going to do um, all along the bottom. So I will finish the other three sides and then I'll bring it back when we're ready for the next thing. And any time we run into a, a pipe... Hmm, you know what though? Let's see if we have one that'll fit that. If we don't, we might have to... Oh, yeah. The, this one fits perfectly. Okay, so yeah, the point being, anytime we run into a pipe going in, uh, we will put a conveyor wall down, assuming we can get it to fit correctly. All right, so yeah, I'll bring you back when we have uh, all the other three sides done. All right, guys, we got the walls in place here. Um, I think two. Why don't we grab... Uh, let's see, how big is this sign here? Oh, you're gonna... Yeah, that's probably okay. Let's move you over to the center here. Are you gonna be upside down? Nope, you're not. Okay, good. <laughs> I hate that. Shenanigans, indeed. Alright, let's uh, make this our typical lime green. Um, let's go to here, grab that guy, and hard hat area, hard hajat. There we go. And let's actually make that glow a little bit too. Setting copy. Good. Okay, and then we have um, that's floating a little bit, but you know what? Whatever. <laughs> we don't. Oh, you know what? I didn't put a I didn't put a door on this side, did I? Okay, we need to do that. Um, I had to do a little bit of shenanigans here with the with this, you know, so the conveyor belt's not going through the thingamadoodle. Let's put this one over here. I mean, I guess we could put it... I guess we could put it on the side instead of up here. Because I don't like floating stuff. Yeah, why don't we do that? Let's just put it here. And we'll... What the fuck, man? You didn't... You didn't paste the settings? Something got screwed up. Let's go redo this one anyway. that here copy paste now let's copy that one since I deleted the other one I don't know if that matters I don't think it does but just to be on the safe side you know what would be cool is if the game actually had razor wire <laughs> I mean it would be appropriate in some situations um, this, what, what I used here were the, uh, one meter walls, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, of the pipe coming in and then again, just put down the rails and nudge them to adjust for the hole there. It does look a little bit weird there, but can't do anything about it, I suppose. And likewise, same thing over here too. All right, let's grab that sign, put it there. And copy and paste. We'll do one over here, and then we have to put a door on that other side, too. This one is... Let's do a half nudge here. So we'll do a control half nudge. That's so useful since I discovered that. That one looks like it's floating a little bit too, but I guess it's just kind of the way the game connects it. Definitely can't do anything about that. Uh, not without really doing some fancy schmancy stuff, which honestly, I don't feel like doing. Let's go here. We'll go to walls. Grab the automated gate and press control to just replace that. Go back to signs, put that one there. 
It's a beautiful thing. Okay. So we got the bottom part taken care of. Now, we're going to go all the way to the top. And we're going to do some stuff on the roof. Stuff that I think is going to look really cool. But it's also going to be very easy to remove and rebuild. Um, if we continue to, you know, expand these floors. Because that's the, that's the goal here, you know, in the future when we add even more power to our world, we're going to add more banks of batteries, uh, you know, for that, right? Okay, so let's go into blueprints and we're going to go to oil products and our fuel tower. And I want the, let's see, yeah, I want the fuel tower roof glass. Okay, and then let's that in place which should be right there and then these are easy we just flip them that way uh, one more this way I think that's good and this one should go here this is just decorative it doesn't really serve any function per se Cool. All right. Now, next thing we're going to do, I might need to, yeah, I, I'm going to actually need to get a little higher than this to finish this out. So let's temporarily grab some power here. Let's bring that up to the top. By the way, I had to turn down my global illumination to medium from high because all of the glare from these lights was <laughs> really causing some stuttering. It still stutters even a little bit on medium, but once we're all finished with the whole thing, I'll um I'll turn it turn it up high just so we can kind of see what it looks like. I normally keep that on high. My machine has no trouble, but with just, you know, all of the god light beams, it was a it was a bit much. Okay, this is temporary. Like I said, we're just going to set that there so we have some power to do a little bit of hovering. Um, can I also... Yeah. Let's put that there as well. We're going to go back into our blueprints and we're going to select the fuel tower rooftop piece. And then that we want to set on top of here... And it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass. Let's see if I'll have enough nudges to get that to go where it needs to. So it needs to go that many nudges that direction. And we're going to run out of power here. And that many nudges that direction. Yeah, that should be good. Okay, let's lock it in place. Excellent. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go into here. We're going to grab the large billboards. And, oh, geez, I don't remember if... I wish it would tell us which is right side up and which isn't. Oh, you know what? I just realized something. If I have it this way, there's that those two little white thingamadoodles on top. Whereas if I have it this way, they're they're not there. I just don't know. I, I'm going to assume this is the right side up. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get that to right about there. And also, I think that's where we want it, but let's lock it. And probably need to go that way one, too. Okay, let's see if that's actually right side up. It is. Okay, cool. So there are markers, these little knobs up here that tell us right side up. That is good to know. Okay, so now we can just 
snap these in place. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Except for, wait a minute, no, that's not what I want to do. I just wanted to put the two there. Okay, let's do the same thing on this other side. I am, I think we're going to need some more uh, power though over here. Um, and let's even bring that up a little higher. Oh, actually, I've got an even better idea. Let's just put a pole right in the center here. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Oh, shit. <laughs> Got a little too far out there. Okay, how far back can I go before I lose power? Okay, that's about as far back. I mean, I could lay more lines down, but I want to try and do this. I think that's correct. Yeah, pretty sure it is. Okay. Oh, no. I'm uh, missing some encased industrial beams. I made sure I had enough... Uh, whatever these things are called. Crystal oscillators, but I guess I didn't make sure I had enough beams. Okay, so here's what I'm... Whoop. Here's what I do. I'm going to cut the camera, go back, get the encased beams, and I'm basically going to do this on all four sides. And then once I have them in place, uh, we'll come back and we'll set them, set them up. All this flickering, by the way, is just these angled wall pieces that I put in here because I felt like this should have a brace. Uh, but it won't be noticeable because we'll never be looking at this from the top down except for at this point right here. Okay, I'll be back when those are set up. All right, guys, we got everything set up here uh, for the billboards. So let's go into here, and what we're going to do is we're going to set... Um, so Okay, so we have three colors with this. I think we want this one. We're going to set this to our, our usual lime green. Um, we're going to set the middle one, which will be affected by gradient, to caution yellow. And uh, I don't think the orange color is going to be used for what we're going to do. But if it is, we'll change it. Okay, now we're going to go to monochrome and select the power image, the lightning bolt. That is, okay, yeah, that is actually affected by this color. So let's make this, let's just make this black. Okay, and then what we're going to do is go to background. We're going to select radial gradient. We're going to go to layout, and we're going to select this layout that just puts the icon right in the center. Okay, let's copy those settings. Oh, the other thing is we want this to be maximum emission strength uh, and glossy. Okay. Now we'll copy that and paste it on the other ones. This is our power of tower. How about if I try that again? This is our tower of power. I don't have Lixdexia, you guys. I don't know why you would think that. Cool. All right. So, yeah, here again, if we get into a situation where uh, we need to expand the floor, we, we just pick all of this up and then use the blueprints to rebuild it higher up. Uh, if you're wondering why I didn't put the billboards in the blueprints, because there wasn't enough room. You know, these these things come all the way out to the very edge of the boundary of the blueprint area. And so, uh, but you know, it wasn't that big of a deal to just add them in like we did here. So, let's take a look-see at that from, from down below. But it's not going to, it's not going to really shine both figurati figuratively and literally <laughs> until nighttime. That looks pretty damn cool, though. Let's look at it from a little further out. 
I like it. I like it. Okay, so. There is one to two more things that I want to do before we're finished with this. Um, both of them, however, we won't really see the full effect of them. Yeah, see how this is stuttering even on medium global illumination? Um, we won't see the full effect of them until nighttime. Uh, where is the sun? Yeah, okay, we got a, a bit of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the camera and I'm going to get set up for, for what I want to show you. And then I'll bring you back when nighttime is fully here and I'll show you the the final step in this whole process of building this thing. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, guys, here is the final configuration of, uh, of the Tower of Power. Um, so as you can see, I have colored each different floor. And if you don't know how I did that, I put each light, uh, each set of lights on its own switch. So uh, you can change the color and also change the brightness and things like that. Um, but what I haven't quite decided yet is if I want to stick with the outline colors. Uh, so what I did here is... I created um, some blueprints with uh, just a bunch of fluorescent lights. Uh, I'm sorry, fluorescent. Um, okay, try that again. <laughs> with a bunch of signs and just turn them essentially into lights. Um, and then, you know, outlined the building. I, I wanted to also put some angles here, but I couldn't get... Um, I couldn't get the right angle. Um, it, so if, if I put this here, if I just move the mouse, it moves on 45 degree angles. And if I hold control, I can move on, you know, different angles, but it's still not right. So I'd say, well, screw it. I guess I, we won't, um, we won't do that then. So anyway, um, it looks pretty cool. However, the other three sides of the building, I left the lighting, the out, out, outline lighting white and one reason for doing it that way is that you know I can change the the color configuration of the lights inside you know from the switch for example I might be in a blue mood someday and I want everything to look blue you know but unfortunately there's no automatic way to change the lights of the signs and I can't uh, even change the lighting of the signs in blueprint mode I had to do each sign individually um, and that's a lot of signs <laughs> you know uh, by copying and pasting right so what I guess I'm I'm trying to decide is if I want to just keep everything the same color all the time and never change it in which case I could go around and color all the rest of the lights to match and by the way, this is as red as red I could get. Um, it still isn't red, it's more orange. Same thing with the blue. This is a a light blue, but I could not get it any darker than that. So it's just kind of weird how that all works. The greens and the yellows look pretty good, but the reds and the blues, um, not, not so much. But, you know, that's just the way the game works, I suppose. So anyway, I, I have to kind of decide if I want to keep everything just white lights and that gives me the flexibility to change the lighting inside anytime I want to. And I don't have to take what will probably be, ah, uh, shit, I don't know, <laughs> at least 30 minutes in real life going around and copied and pasting the colors on each individual piece here. Um, or, you know, if I want to actually have all sides color. But I, I thought I would do one side and at least show it to you guys and, and even look at it myself to see if I liked it or not. And the jury's kind of out on that. Uh, the other thing that I did too is I added um, some lights up here, you know, just kind of, um, you know, search lighting or show, showcasing the, the actual sign. And I put the switch for that up here. So right now those are um, currently on green lighting. What we could do 
maybe is um, put him back to white lighting. I, I kind of like I, I like the way that the green lighting accentuates these metal columns though. I just think it looks really good so I, we'll probably keep those on green. Uh, the way I had to make these two by the way is I did this course in the blueprint designer. These lights will only attach to walls. Um, but I needed to get them, you know, tilted up so they would point up in the sky. So basically what I did was I uh, used the the four meter wall. So I just set the four meter, meter wall down here. And then I put a light on it so we could get the right angle except for that I had to uh, do this, right? And then I took this away and I grabbed a, just a beam to kind of put under it so it looked like it had a base on it. That was it. So pretty easy. Okay, let's get rid of that stuff. So yeah, um, I'm pretty happy with how this project came together. This was, uh, I mentioned this already before, but this is by far the biggest project that I've done to date in this game. It was a lot of work. It took me many, 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 many hours over multiple real life days <laughs> to do this whole thing from start to finish. But uh, I'm very happy with, you know, how it how it ultimately turned out. And um, not only does it look badass, in my opinion, but it also is providing 10,000 megawatts of power to us, which is amazing. Um, yeah, so all of these switches are over here. And, you know, I can change it to any color I want to. And, you know, the more that I... The more I think about it, I think I am going to probably go with just the white lights. Because, um, yeah, it's just, it, it's, it's more consistent and it'll be a hell of a lot less work, you know, if we do decide to change the colors up at some point just for funsies. But that's what it looks like in nighttime. Let me no, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Should you know? Should we? Should I keep a, the lights white, or should I go around the entire building and color them all according to the floor? I'd like to hear your opinion. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to to do it. If some of you want me to do it, uh, at the end of the day, I, I still need to do what I I feel like is the the right thing. But I am interested in your opinion, and you know, if a lot of you do think the the colored um, you know outline lights is the right way to go, let me know. And maybe we'll just end up doing it. So, okay, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. Um, I will tell you, you know, in general, what the plan is for the next episode uh, coming up. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do some research. I haven't actually looked at the MAM for a very long time. And there's a, some things in there that we can research now. Um... Well, you know, like, for example, getting some more pocket dimensions. And then there's still probably a few things that we will we'll need to gather some stuff up. But we'll take a look at the man first, do some research. And um, then we need to start thinking about phase four. So all of that stuff in the upper right-hand corner of my screen is end-game, very high, highly advanced equipment. And it's going to be take some doing to start making that stuff. Uh, and I haven't even thought about it, to be honest with you. So... But we're going to start moving in that direction. Um, I want to design a more substantial road system that goes beyond just, you know, our west coast area here. And along with that, a rail system as well. Um, because more than likely, you know, we're going to need to, you know, start using trains and truck routes to continue bringing material into our little city here. It is my intention for the rest of this playthrough to pretty much do everything here so that we can kind of make it into like a little factory city. Uh, when we start over with 1.0, uh, may, I may not be doing it that way. We might have individual factories, uh, you know, at different places across the map. But we'll even with that, though, we'll still have a central hub. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what's coming up. So we'll just kind of play all that by ear. But thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch y'all in the next episode. That tower looks awesome.